Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas. In our ongoing study in a philosophy of religion by Edgar Sheffield Brightman. We just concluded um, Brightman's Phenomenology of Religion, and now we pick up on the second level of phenomenology, his Phenomenology of Christian Value. Let's begin by taking a look at block one. We're going to take a look at defining value and evaluation. And we begin with the fundamental definitions for value. <clears throat> they are theoretical concepts. They are hypotheses. They are guides to investigation. Value is that which is esteemed by anyone at any time. It's the experience of a desired object, and it is the realization of desire. There is potential value, there is actual value, and values may be intrinsic ends or instrumental means. Intrinsic value equals a value that a value that is an end in itself, and instrumental value produces intrinsic value. All intrinsic values do cause and effect, therefore they are also instrumental, says Brighton Brightman. So he begins with Definitions, and if you look at note two, ideals are a class of instrumental values. The value of an ideal may serve as the means to actual intrinsic value. An ideal actually is the definition of value. Ideals have two functions. They are causal, being instrumental. They are logical when they're used to judge our values. And ideals which judge our values function as norms. And anytime we apply norms to values, that is evaluation. That becomes the definition of evaluation, applying norms to values. Now, the retained memory of valuations, and these may be called empirical values, value claims, and apparent values. Empirical values occur in experience. Value claims are those which are felt to be true. And apparent values are value claims that need further investigation. So Brightman posits a triad. We begin with a value claim. We pass through apparent value testing in order to reach actualized empirical value. We begin with posited value claim and then pass through the value testing of that posited value claim to realize actualized empirical value. So it gives us his triad formula in the first moment here. Now under verification, verification is a process of relating experience to a rational system of thought. Rational assertions of truth are subject to inquiry and testing. Neutral experience also exists and toward which we would be indifferent. But basically you would do verify by comparing experience to a rational system of thought. And now we'll take a look at block two and take a look at each system of values. What constitutes a system of values? Whiteman tells us that uh, Value is grasped as morally good, logically true, or aesthetically beautiful. And we could also add holiness. W.G. Everett did posit a table of values. And so if we take a look at that uh, Everett table and Brightman's modification of the Everett table in note two, there are eight groups. There are economic and bodily values, recreational and associational, character and aesthetic, intellectual and religious, Brightman revised this group. He begins with instrumental values. There are natural, which are the forces of nature. There are economic, which are physical processes. Then he moves on to lower intrinsic values of the bodily, that is, the consciousness of well-being, and the recreational, the satisfaction from play and work, the production of value. And then we reach higher intrinsic values, which are social, the consciousness of cooperation, Character, the experience of goodwill, aesthetic, the satisfaction of the beautiful and the sublime, and the intellectual, the experience of truth-finding, 
and the religious, the dependence upon powers beyond humanity. So he breaks it down into instrumental and lower intrinsic and higher intrinsic. Now, in note three, Brightman wants to posits the notion of the coalescence of intrinsic values. Each intrinsic value contributes to the total value experience. They combine into a whole. Each value references the others. All values are abbreviated under the systematic whole of value. Each value mirrors the whole system of value. So coalescence is a necessity for Brightman. Now religious values, religion is the application of the axiom of conservation of value. Its distinguishing marks are a unique sense of dependence, a mystical experience of worship and prayer, the awareness of revelation, the acknowledgement of God, and the cooperation toward the cosmic purpose, which we would call divine purpose for creation. But key for Brightman in this initial first lesson in this second level of phenomenology. The key terms are coalescence and interdependence. Values are not isolated ever. They always are interrelated with other values. And that's where we're going to go with block three here. We're going to look at coalescence and interpenetration of religious value as a necessity, according to Brightman, that it's an absolute necessity. Coalescence as necessity, supreme values of religion must be defined and critiqued. We must negate extreme subjectivism. We must negate objective irrationalism. Subjective religion without theology is a complete impossibility. Religious values include beliefs about right and wrong, beauty, destiny, and divine power and will. And then two, interdependence is a necessity. Religion can never be independent of history, sociology, or psychology, as we learned in an earlier lesson. Additionally, for Brightman, the philosophical dialectic of reason must be employed as a necessity. There's his great love for Hegel right there. The philosophical dialectic of reason must be employed for religious values. Living religion is dialectical in nature. Religious value is a philosophical problem. Religion needs intellectual interpretation, period. So key for Brightman, key for Brightman, living religion is dialectical. Living religion is dialectical. So we, we go to note three here, the actual coalescence of values. Religious values are meaningless without coalescence. Relating ideals to existence must take place Religion's task is the production, the preservation, and the increase of values. To actualize value in empirical form is the goal of religion. Religion must be concrete and practical. Therefore, we take up phronesis and praxis. And for religion, ideals are valid notions that are posited and external potentialities in actuality that ask to be actualized. So... Values are valid notions and latencies or potentialities in actuality. Moltmann used the term latency. I kind of like that term, but we'll use Brightman's potentiality. Values are valid notions and potentialities. And we actualize those potentialities dialectically, okay? Brightman is a neo-Hegelian. We actualize potentialities through the dialectic, the philosophical dialectic of reason, which is a necessity for religious values. So in this first lesson, we are looking at 93 to 118. We're looking at the first lesson of the second level of phenomenology for Brightman. He finished his phenomenology of religion. Now he wants to examine a phenomenology of value. But We've already transitioned to living religion after we finished the first level of phenomenology. So the starting point is we begin with realizing we are now beginning immersed in a living religion. That was discovered in the first phenomenology. So now we have living religion, 
as our starting point, and living religion confronts the problem of religious value. That's what Brightman is saying. He says, we concluded on page 93, we concluded with the authenticity of living religion, which for Brightman is Christianity, living religion, which goes beyond the prophetic. But living religion must confront the philosophical problem of religious value. So now Brightman says it's mandatory that we address religious value, and that means we address it empirically as phenomenology of value. That is exactly what Brightman is saying here. We must of necessity, it is a necessity, that we confront the philosophical problem of religious value from our standpoint of living religion, which was concluded in the first level of phenomenology. I love the fact that Brightman approaches this in levels of phenomenology. It just, it's not one simplistic system. It is a, first, the establishment of a phenomenology of religion that reaches living religion. Now, he says we have to, of necessity, of necessity, of necessity. We must take up the fact that living religion is dialectic in nature. It is dialectic in nature and it is confronted with the problem of value. So how does a dialectical living religion resolve the philosophical problem of religious value? That's the question being posited here in this first lesson. How does a dialectical living religion confront the philosophical problem of religious value? And he tells us that it approaches through a system of value, a holistic system, because values don't exist in an isolated state. They always are interpenetrated and they coalesce with other values in a holistic system. So that's the first axiom of truth is that religious values participate in coalescence of necessity, of necessity. And that becomes coupled with the notion of a living religion that is dialectical. Necessity of coalescence, dialectical living religion will come together here. So brilliant teaching from Edgar Sheffield Brightman <clears throat> never ceases to amaze me. I mean, just he had a brilliant phenomenology of religion. I think we all have to agree that pages 1 through 93 gave us a brilliant scholarly phenomenology of religion which reached living religion. And now he is going to continue that scholarly brilliance with a phenomenology of religious value. And we work that out dialectically within a system, a holistic system of value. No value is isolated. We work it out dialectically dialectically in a system, a holistic system of religious values. That's going to be uh, the conclusion to this uh, brilliant lesson from Brightman on pages one, uh, 93 to 118 on beginning with definitions for value. But we are now officially launched into the second level of phenomenology, the phenomenology of religious value, having completed the phenomenology of living religion. So that's going to wrap up this lesson. We'll pick up next time on page 119.